Hi, I'm Jan de Leeuw. I'm uh, working at the International Livestock Research Institute, ILRI. Going back to where I started from, I said, well, there's, there's, there's these, 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 these hazards which regularly come into drylands, and then you have these more long-term changes like cultures changing and road infrastructure. These are long-term changes which are affecting uh, pastoral communities. Yet, the question is, how do they deal with hazards, and hazards which are there like droughts and climate change? So let me go back and reflect a bit on that. Well, if you look at it, we tend to, to see drought when it occurs as something bad which is happening with, with immediate disasters on pastoral communities. That's a, a kind of misperception. What you, what you realize if you start to look into it is that pastoral communities are fairly well adapted to drought. They have systems where they are capable to, uh, to deal with drought. And when, when a drought occurs, like here in East Africa, and it's just one rainy season which is failing, it's weakening the livestock, but it's not leading to great mortality of the livestock. And people have ways to deal with that. What is really disastrous, if you have two or three or four seasons on a row which, uh, which are failing, and we had that kind of drought in southern Kenya in uh, 2008 and 2009, there were two rainy seasons uh, failing. So what happens is, during the first first uh, rainy season which fails, the livestock doesn't find enough food, so it's weakening, it's lo losing its body fat and body condition, but it's still there. And people are just anticipating that the rains come back. Then the, the rains don't come back, and you see a further weakening, and the first animals start to die. And then when the third season fails, you really see massive starvation. And that's what happened in Cajado in 2008 and 2009, with some 70 to 80 percent of the cattle uh, which passed away. So that is, these kinds of droughts are having a significant impact on, uh, on pastoralists, not the droughts which last for just one season. And the impacts of that, we started to realize, they are long-lasting. If you lose in the stock market in New York 80% of, uh, of your funds, uh, and after that, a crash like that, normally you get a recovery period, it takes quite a long time, it's quite, it takes three or four years uh, or perhaps longer, five or ten years, before your stocks are back to, uh, to the level where they were. The same thing is true for pastoral societies. If you get these kind of crashes, and if they are really significant, uh, it may take up five years for cattle uh, to recover a herd, and you need to have five years of good uh, rainy seasons. It's a bit uh, more quick for small stock, sheep and goats, because they produce offspring two times a year, whereas cattle has offspring just one time a year. So you can ro recover a bit more quickly. And you see what's happening in pastoral societies that increasingly people are moving into small stock because it's an adaptation. After these kind of crashes, they are able to recover much more quickly. So what's happening right now at this moment is uh, in Kenya again, in northern Kenya, there's a drought. Last year the short range failed. And that is uh, uh, related to a La Nina which is there. La Nina is a cooling of the uh, Pacific Ocean, which is having a negative impact on the short range in Kenya. And we are now just waiting to see the long range starting. So far they haven't started in northern Kenya. So if you follow this, this story, um, the animals now are in a weak condition. If, this is, if the long range now fail, you really uh, have a situation where we are getting problems and animals are starting to die. And it's right now the time for Kenyan government and non-government to make sure that they're well prepared to support pastoral communities uh, in case the long range uh, fail.